Hi, this is Anu and welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you how to create my version of a crochet mermaid tail. It was a tutorial that was highly requested from me and I was so excited to create it for you guys. So much fun, in fact, that I couldn't decide between two versions. One has little um, shell pattern all over the tail and the other one is more like a crochet net. So I decided to share with you the shell pattern today and then the neck pattern in my next tutorial. I hope you will enjoy it. Again, I try to use only simple basic crochet techniques. If you need to catch on on those techniques, click the link down below. I would love for you to subscribe to my growing crochet family and if you would like so to get new tutorials every week, here. I hope you will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. I see many many happy mermaids in my future and yours. Are you ready to crochet? I know I am. Let's do it. Happy crochet! For this tutorial you will need two skins of yarn Red Heart with Love in the color Iced Aqua, a crochet hook 7 millimeters and a crochet hook 8 millimeters, some scissors and a tapestry needle. Take your 8mm crochet hook and your yarn, make a slip knot and make 60 chains. When you're done with your chain, place it in front of you on a flat surface. Make sure not to twist it to create different sizes mermaid tail, the one that is perfect for you, you will take your chain and wrap it around your waist or your model's waist and count how many chains it takes. As long as it is a multiple of three, you are good to go. So the number of chains will be the circumference of the person's waist. Slip stitch with the first chain you had created at the beginning chain one and make a half double crochet in the same chain, make a half double crochet in the next chain and in the next. For this mermaid tail we are going to crochet in the round. So make half double crochet until you meet the end of your round, until you meet the first half double crochet you had made at the beginning. When you are at the beginning of your second round, half double crochet in the first stitch from the previous round. Take a stitch marker, place it at the top of your first half double crochet. And since we are crocheting in the round, having a stitch marker will help you figure out where the round begins or ends. Continue making half double crochet all around. For the third round, you are going to skip two stitches and in the third, you are going to make nine double crochet in the same stitch. Then you are going to skip two stitches again and make a single crochet in the third. I created a little shell. Skip two stitches and make nine double crochet in the third stitch again. We're creating our third round, but our first round of shells. You made two shells and for the third round you're going to continue like so all around making your last nine double crochet shell at the end of your third round and for your fourth round you're going to make a single crochet 
at the top middle of the shell from the previous round. So since it was a nine double crochet shell, you're going to count four, and at the fifth one, you're going to single crochet. And then you're going to repeat the shell pattern, making nine double crochet in the single crochet from the previous round, from the third round. And you're going to continue like so all around. For your fifth round, you are going to still single crochet at the top of the fifth double crochet from the previous round, from the fourth round. But in the single crochet, you are going to make eight double crochets instead of nine. And you're going to continue like so all around for your fifth round. Don't forget to place your stitch marker at the beginning of the round to help you figure out where it ends and where it begins. For your sixth round, you are going to make eight double crochets in the single crochet from the previous round, from the fifth round. And now since you have eight double crochet, you are going to count three and you're going to single crochet on top of the fourth double crochet from the previous round. And you are going to make eight double crochet in the single crochet from the previous round. And you're going to continue like so for your sixth round. Single crochet on top of the fourth double crochet and then eight double crochet in the next single crochet from the previous round. Finishing there for your sixth round. For the seventh round, we are going to make seven double crochet in the single crochet from the sixth round. And since you still have eight double crochet from the sixth round, you are still counting three and then single crochet on top of the fourth double crochet from the previous round and then continuing like so all around. Seventh round and we have seven double crochets. And for the eighth round, continuing making seven double crochet in the single crochet from the previous round. and still doing a single crochet on top of the fourth double crochet from the previous round. And that is your eighth round. Now you're getting the idea, we're going to diminish the number of double crochet we do, not every each and every round, but every often. I'll tell you exactly when to diminish. And that is going to help us create the narrowing of the tail so the waist will be wider and then when we diminish the quantity of double crochet in the shells it's going to it's going to create the tapering effect of the mermaid tail so now we are finished with your eighth round having seven double crochets in the single crochet and you're going to continue like so until the end of your 14th round for your 15th round we're going to make six double crochet in the single crochet from the 14th round.
and you're going to single crochet still on top of the fourth um, double crochet from the previous round and you're going to continue like so all around for your 16th round this time you're going to still make six double crochets in the single crochet from the previous round but this time you're going to single crochet on top of the third double crochet from the 15th round from the previous round and you're going to crochet like that all around six double crochet in the single crochet and then single crochet on top of the third double crochet from the previous round don't forget to place your stitch marker and you are going to continue like so until the end of your 18th round now for the 19th round you're going to make five double crochets in the single crochet from the 18th round and still make a single crochet on top of the third double crochet from the previous round And you are going to continue like so for nine more rounds. So you will have a total of 27 rounds of shells. Now for your 28th round, you're going to make four double crochets into single crochet from the previous round and you're going to single crochet on top of the second double crochet from the previous round, from your 27th round. Now you're at the 28th round, four double crochets in the single crochet from the previous round and your single crochet on top of the second double crochet from the previous round. This is how your work will look like. You see how it's wider at the waist and it's tapering down. And those are the shells. You are going to continue like so with rows of four double crochets and one single crochet on top of the second um, double crochet from the previous round. And you are going to continue like so until the end of your 40th round. For your 41st round, you're going to make three double crochets in the single crochet from your previous round and you're going to still single crochet on top of the second double crochet from the previous round and continue like so all around that will be your 41st round and for the 42nd round you are going to still make three double crochets in the single crochet from the previous round single crochet on top of the second double crochet from your previous round and you're going to continue like so all around I continue like so for three more rounds and I was satisfied with the length of my mermaid tail but you do you and you do as many rounds as you need to reach your perfect length once you have achieved the length you wanted you're going to slip stitch on top of the next shell and you're going to fasten off take your tapestry needle and sew in all the loose tails at the wrong side of your work and you are done with the main part of your tail but a mermaid tail is not a mermaid tail without a fin let me show you how to make a beautiful fin 
Your fin is going to be made out of two parts that will be assembled together. Now you're going to take the 7mm crochet hook and I like my fin to be nice and wide so I chained 51. In the second chain from your hook you're going to half double crochet and you're going to half double crochet all along. We're no longer crocheting in the round, we are crocheting in rows now. So when you reach the end of your row, you have to double crochet in the last stitch, chain one, turn your work around, and for the second row, you are only going to pick up the back part of your stitch, and you're going to half double crochet all along, almost till the end. We're going to stop and leave three stitches to be. Those last three stitches, you're not going to crochet in it, you're just going to turn your work, chain, and you're going to do the third row, again, half double crochet, only in the back part of your stitch, you're creating those little ridges that will make the tail look even more real. You reach the end of your third um, row, turn your work around, chain, and for your fourth row, you're going to half double crochet, again, only picking the back part of your stitch. And you're going to stop leaving three stitches to be. Chain, turn your work around, and again, we are at the fifth row now. And you see the shape of the, mer the little fin that is taking shape? And you really are going to continue like so. For your pattern, one row of half double crochet until the end, and the next just leaving the three last stitches to be. I continue for 22 rows. Fast enough. So now you are done with the first half of your fin. You're going to repeat exactly the same thing for the second half. Once you are done with your second half, do not fasten off. You're just going to place it on top of the first, matching the shape, the little star shapes, and we're going to assemble them together by crocheting through both of the seams, the short side of those fins. Make sure to match the stitches together and just single crochet to both of the stitches, the stitch on the side of the fin that is closer to you and the stitch on the side of the fin that is further away from you. And assemble the seam like that. But leave the third last stitches to be. Fasten off, sew in all the loose tails, and you are done with your fin. Now when it's placed like that, this is how it will look, but you will need to sew your fin on your mermaid tail. And for that, you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to place the middle of your fin right in front of the middle bottom of your tail and sew it from the middle, making sure that everything is sewn in. So the both side of your mermaid tail and your fin it doesn't really matter if it's neat, if it looks good, because as you will see, everything would be kind of uh, crumpled down because the width of your fin is much more wider than the bottom of your tail. So you just are going to create those little ripple effects. And you'll see that when I'm done sewing the bottom of the tail to the upper part of my fin, I'm going to eventually take some string, pass it through the whole thing, and then pull it, and it will make everything look exactly the way it's supposed to. Very basic sewing skills needed for that, which is perfect for me since it's 
not my forte. So do you see how I took my needle and I passed it through the bottom to what I had sewn together, the fin and the tail, up and down, up and down, and then I pull it at the end. And that's the final look. You are done. You just created this gorgeous, beautiful, whimsical crochet mermaid tail. And I absolutely love it. I think it came out gorgeous. I like the texture, I like the color. And make sure you choose a yarn that is soft to the touch. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm looking forward to many more. And in the meantime, happy crochet. Mm -hmm.